This is Abe Friedanzer from CinemaDailyUS.com, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with Elsie Fisher about her role in the new film Family Squares. How are you today, Elsie? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. How are you, man? Good, good. It's really great to be able to talk to you. I thought this movie was very entertaining and also very poignant, which I'm not sure I expected. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think there's there's a lot of films um, that are kind of about you know COVID and uh, COVID and quarantine, but they they I feel like they focus on the the COVID part. So it was it was interesting to do something that focused more on the quarantine part. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that there's a part early in the film where someone's like, did she die from COVID? And they're like, no, she didn't. And it's just a very pointed thing that this is happening during, you know, quarantine and lockdown and all that, but it's not specifically a COVID movie, which I think is interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I think it's just nice, especially because we're, we're so far in the pandemic now than we were when we had made that film. It's really nice that it's, you know, it doesn't feel um, redundant or anything like that. Yeah, that's definitely true. And we got a little bit of a tease of what the filming was like in the end credits of the <laughs> film. But I'm curious, how, how did this work? Did you just like get mailed stuff or sent instructions <laughs> that you sort of have to set it up yourself? Um, it was actually really nice. I think I'm one of the few people that actually got to work really closely with Stephanie Lang on the movie. Um, because I, I was not only in state, because we, we shot my my parts in California, and I think that's that's where she like lives. Uh, not to dox her, but <laughs> Um, but yeah, I filmed a lot of my stuff in person with her on set and that was, I really appreciated like having an in-person director. Um, I'm very, yeah, I'm curious what it was like for everyone else. So I think they, they really did send them like tech kits. Well, I also know that I've spent time throughout the pandemic on zoom with some adults and old, older adults, and there's often some mishaps and issues trying to get stuff <laughs> working. Is that something that happened during this filming also? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think again, like, uh, thankfully for my stuff, um, e either a lot of it was like my part was rec uh, recorded separately and I read with Stephanie, but I, there was a scene where I was, um, actually over zoom with, with June Squibb and I was like totally fangirling. She's amazing. But, um, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. It was a really interesting experience. I think it added to the movie actually. But it's like, it's never the instinct to want to act over Zoom because there is just like lag or inherent stuff. But that's also what the movie's about. So it, it really works in our favor. Yeah. And I know I spend a lot of time on Zoom doing conversations like this. I'm sure you do too. Did you get like Zoom fatigue filming this movie? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I think I probably hadn't used it much before then, to be honest, because um, even for promoting stuff, it, like I don't, I don't know if when we were making this like Zoom, Zoom interviews with the with video and everything were like as big a thing. It was still just regular old stupid phoners. I know this is definitely better. It's nice to talk face to face. Yeah, it is. It is absolutely. Well, you mentioned that you were fangirling over June Squibb, but I think you could do that with pretty much the entire cast here. So I'd love to hear a little bit about that. But let's start with Timothy Simons, who what what a, what a great choice to get to play a, a family member, right? Oh, absolutely. And yeah, I mean, I met I met him for the first time over Zoom <laughs> while we were in like uh, while we were in pre production for the movie, and he's just so lovely and like, um, which is so funny because I I love Veep. Um, and he's very much like not necessarily lovely and veep, uh, the character, I guess, but he's very good. So I think that um, speaks to his talent. I also enjoyed seeing him in Yes, God, Yes. I'm not sure if you've seen that one. I haven't seen that one. But you have to see I that. Have it's to a, it's a very, very funny. He's, he, he plays a priest. That's all I'll say. But oh, it's... yeah, that's like a perfect fit. It's a math thing in heaven. <laughs> And so what about the rest of the cast? Is there anyone you were particularly excited, anyone that you had, you know, sort of admired for years or anyone who was different than you would have thought based on how you worked with them here? I mean, I mean, um, I, I got to work like a little bit with um, Billy Magnuson, who I think is also supremely talented. And I love his show, which Stephanie Lang actually directed a couple episodes of Made for Love. I think that's, it's so wonderful. Um, and also, I mean, Henry Winkler, come on. Come on, the fans. Um, but, and I'm very excited to see him in this upcoming season of Barry. It'll be fun. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, and so you said you worked with Stephanie, but um, you've worked with other directors before. How do you think it was different in this experience because of all the, because just because of the pandemic even? 
Yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah, it's, you know, it was my first time working. Uh, I mean, yeah, pandemic working was super new. So like uh, regulations and testing and everything were um, probably more strict even than they necessarily need to be, but like pro probably quite warranted. Um, but it, it was really nice. It was a really personal set, which is not an experience you get very often. Uh, you know, that, that was one of my favorite parts of getting to work on eighth grade when I got to make that was that was like a super small set. It was pretty much like me and Bo and then our very tiny crew for a lot of that. Um, and it was a, a really similar experience making this. Um, and yeah, and there were there were a lot of things that happened remotely. Like I, I had um, my wardrobe fitting remotely and that was like interesting. Um, yeah, it was really fun though. Is there anything that you did as part of your experience in this film that you think you'll take with you and do again in other projects in the future? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think it was a really fun um, opportunity to build a character um, just because I think Cassidy is like, I, I don't know. I, I think uh, like, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure about stuff I would make, but I, th I do think or necessarily take with me. I, 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 I don't, in specific, because I think, everything I do has thankfully left me with just like um, a set of tools and just like building upon each other. Um, but I don't know, this is a very interesting character study because I think it's been really understated uh, how much the pandemics like affected teenagers and kind of anyone who's like trying to figure out what the hell is happening with their life. So that was fun. <laughs> So what parts of your character did you relate to most related to that, you know, pandemic experience? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think her whole relationship with her dad is, is very real and, you know, not exactly my relationship with my dad, but like, there's, there's something about the, you know, wanting to be close and then also just like really frustrated. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I think, um, I don't know again just like her her kind of like the way she's awkward I really relate to as well <laughs> you know well speaking of awkward people you mentioned eighth grade before and I, I have to talk about that I it's funny because I when I thought about it I was like oh well we see her on camera a lot too recording videos but obviously very different hair there so like you it definitely wouldn't immediately get it you, you do look different but there's yeah. a lot more in terms of other characters in this film. Do you think that those two characters would get along if they both existed in the same world? I don't know if they would. I don't think they wouldn't get along. I just don't know if they'd even uh, be able to talk to each other. <laughs> I think they'd probably just be like, you know, I, I don't want to describe either of them necessarily as shy or quiet. Cause like, I feel like the whole point of eighth grade was like that. Everyone's shy and quiet. No one's shy and quiet, but um, they're both kind of shy and, quiet so they might just sit in the room and be like hi hey yeah oh I like your you know okay and then be on their phones that's fair that's fair <laughs> but maybe they'd have a, a budding friendship who knows maybe well you've done a lot of work you know before then and, and since then but do you feel that eighth grade is still the role that you most get recognized for oh yeah for sure and I mean like I well I think that's that's probably what most people think of when they think of me although I I look so different from when I did eighth grade. It's not like I really get, I don't get recognized so much these days. I'm just a kind of cool civilian, you know. <laughs> well, I know that you do have a few projects coming up. I think one of them is My Best Friend's Exorcism. Can you talk about that at all? Yeah, I'm, I was so excited to make that. Um, that's been in the works since pre-pandemic as most things are. Um, and it's it's a movie adaptation of the book um, of the same name by Grady Hendrix, and it's uh, directed by David Thomas, who who worked on Killing Eve a lot, and it has a Maya Miller. Uh, she plays the titular best friend, um, and she's really incredible. And uh, it's a really special movie. It's like a horror comedy that drama. I'm like reluctant to say coming of age because I think people just kind of ascribe that label to any movie about teenagers, but like you get what I mean. That's fair. And I know you have a few other projects in the works. Is there anything you can talk about right now? Yeah, I mean, speaking of horror, um, I'm in the, the newest iteration of Texas Chainsaw and that that's coming out like at midnight tonight or, you know, so it should be out by the time I think people see this. So go watch it. <laughs>
Do you feel like horror is a new genre that you really want to spend a lot of time with? Um, I think I actually need a break for a little bit. Um, because what I the the project I'd hopped into right after eighth grade was this um Hulu show, Castle Rock, and that was Stephen King. And then pandemic hit, so I had kind of a, a break, and then I've just been doing horror since then. So I, I think I need a little like romantic comedy something. Is there anything else that you're particularly eager to try? Obviously, you have many years ahead of you in your career, but is there anything that you're looking forward to particularly that or anyone you'd like to work with? Yeah, well, I mean, in terms of people I'd like to work with, I, um, I'd love to work with Sean Baker one day. I, I love his movie so much. Um, uh, but I don't know. I mean, in terms of stuff I want to do, I do really want to branch out into writing and directing. So um, I, I guess I got to start working on that. But uh, yeah. And do you want to do more TV? Was Castle Rock a positive experience? Yeah, I think so. I, I would love to do TV. I think um, the commitment of TV is is probably daunting, and I, I I probably have commitment issues. I need to like speak to a therapist about. But um, I think it's awesome to be able to to stay with a character that long and and build on them. So that would be really fun. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you speaking with me today. Mm, uh, yeah, of course. Thank you, man. It's been great. Of course, everybody should make sure to see Family Squares, which comes out in theaters and on demand on February 25th. Thanks so much, Elsie. Yeah, thank you.